All right, welcome to yet another fabulous Linux Zoo crew. And today on the Zoo, we are going to be discussing FOSS, free and open source software, why it's important, and why you should care. But before we get started on today's topic, I would like to share with you a few words from our founder, Voltam. Hi, I'm Voltam, founder of the Linux Distro community. The Linux Distro community is a place for people to hang out and discuss Linux, Linux distros, software, and open source. The Linux Distro community is a community funded by its members for its members. We are a friendly, welcoming community that encourages people who use Linux operating systems and software to share their passion and knowledge with other people. We believe that when people share information freely, everyone benefits. We'd love to see you become a part of the Linux Distro community. You can voice chat with us on Mumble or text chat with us in IRC. Head over to linuxdistrocommunity.com for details. Join in today in the sharing of knowledge and the freedom that a Linux operating system gives people. Thank you. All right, we've got a hot topic for all of you today, but before we get started, I'd like to pass the microphone over to our co-host, Lectro, who will introduce our panel of guests. Thank you, Spatry. Today we have Lectro, we have Ben, we have Marcus, we have Oskult, we have Pizza Dude, myself, and Spatry. Don't forget Armageddon, he's here too. All right, and uh, we've got some newcomers. Ben is uh, here with us, we've got Marcus, and we've got Pizza Dude. Uh, good to see you guys, and welcome to the Linux Distro community. I'd also like to welcome everybody uh, who is listening to us live in the listening room, and feel free to share your comments with us on IRC as the discussion uh, progresses here. All right, well, our topic is free and open source software today, and uh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia here, free and open source software, or also known as FLOSS, uh, free library open source software, is software that is both free software and open source. It is liberally licensed to grant users to write the right to use, copy, study, change, and improve its design through the availability of its source code. This approach has gained both momentum and acceptance and has potential benefits have increasingly recognized by both individuals and corporations. Now, uh, one thing I love about, you know, and pretty much, you know, that explains it in great detail right there, that of itself. Uh, the free and open source software movement is fantastic, and I mean, most of us are already using it right now. We're using Linux-based operating systems, and uh, Linux has really matured over the uh, years. I've, I've watched it grow, and uh, we've seen a lot of really good innovations. Let's go ahead and start off with with you Armageddon. Um, hello everyone and um, welcome to the show I guess it's been a while. Um, I wanted to say that um, free as in the free software foundation and open source as in the open source foundation which um, which are two different foundations that kind of are the same at some topics but um, and they differ on other topics as well. Um, but yeah, it, it, we, we, most of us use a lot of um, free or open source um, software depending on which application we're using. I think it's, um, I, I personally love it simply because that it, it talks to our human nature of sharing things which is a sub on, on a subconscious level. Um, sharing is good for us and, and it talks to us as human beings about sharing stuff um, that we contribute to in a way or another. Exactly, you know, and you know, there are so many software packages out there, you know, you can only use this software on one computer. You know, some of these software developers out there have some ridiculous license terms. They have patents all over these things, and it's, you know, really hampering innovation, where the free and open source movement is inviting people to come in, have a look at this software that was created, make it better, make it your own, and then give it back to the community so that other can benefit. Ben, how do you see that? Well, I see open source and this FOSS as a good thing, and I really feel that they're um, they're in the right path and all that good stuff. Electro. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, but we hear about it all the time. I mean, Volton, Volton says it all at the beginning, doesn't it? Every time we do a, a Zoom crew about, we have to, the, you know, it's all about sharing the knowledge and, and about, you know, the experience with others. And it's the same with software, but like you said, some companies just prefer to keep it all to themselves and say, look, you can only do, because we've patterned it, we want it for all, all for ourselves and you can't, 
you can't go and copyright it, basically. Marcus, what are your thoughts? I think um, open source is good for the fact that the code is open source, which means people can change it and actually improve on it, and they don't necessarily have to be the people that actually created it, which is a good thing. Pizza Dude. The reason open source is a lot better is because they uh, they restrict the proprietary companies restrict you, like even if you pay for the software, they restrict the amount of times you install the software. So if you're like reformatting your computer. Um, you have to go through illegitimate means to get the software that you paid for to work. And with open source software, you have the freedom to install the software how many, how many times you want and stuff like that. So it's really good. It's interesting you bring that up, Pizza Dude, because we were discussing this earlier that you had an issue with a piece of software that you were, you know, that you had used that license code so many times, and then all of a sudden now it's expired. And it's shameful what companies are doing out there. Now, let's go ahead and move on a little bit to the history of uh, free and open source software. And this is from the Wikipedia. In the 1950s, 1960s, and 1970s, it was normal for computer users to have their have the freedoms uh, that are provided by free software. Software was commonly shared by individuals who use computers and most companies were so concerned with selling their hardware devices they provided the software for free. Organizations of users and suppliers were formed to facilitate the exchange of software. Uh, by the late 1960s, change was inevitable. Software costs were dramatically increasing and growing software industry was uh, competing with the hardware manufactured bundled software products. Uh, leased machines required software support while providing no revenue for software and some customers were able to better meet their own needs did not want the cost of free software bundled with hardware product costs. So, and then, of course, uh, in 1983, Richard Stallman, longtime member of the hacker community at the MIT Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, announced the GNU project, saying that uh, he had become frustrated with the effects of the change in culture of the computer industry and its users. Software development for the GNU operating system began in January of 1984, and the free software foundation was founded in October 1985. An article outlining the project and its goals was published in March 1985 titled the GNU Manifesto. And the manifesto also focused heavily on the philosophy of free software. He developed the free software definition, the concept of copyleft designed to ensure freedom for all. Now uh, Armageddon, I think you had something you wanted to mention on that earlier. Um, yeah, I wanted to say that there's a difference between um, the, the the main difference between free software and open source is basically uh, the free software free as in uh, free the free software foundation, which doesn't mean free as in money free. It means just you know as in uh, um, free to share and free basically free to uh, to have the source code to change. Um, the main difference is that companies like, um, you know, Netscape, Net, I think it was Netscape, uh, which changed later to Mozilla, had problems with the Free Software Foundation on, on license-based um, stuff, like legal stuff, and, and how can we share our source code, uh, still have, let's say, our own source, have our own logo and name, stuff like that. Um, so they, 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 were, they were less open uh, minded about the idea of sharing everything and still having stuff that are copyrighted to them and they, they were compelled to create something that's called the open source foundation which is um, sort of like the free software foundation but it's 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 a different license over over the top okay now I have an article I'd like to share with you guys and I'd like to get you guys impressions on this now this is an older article I, I think this article is a little bit over a year old but this came up in my research on the free and open source software movement and this was an article from a PC magazine.com and there was a survey conducted by Accenture and the survey stated that 98 percent of companies use open source and they also found in the survey that 29% 
would stated that they would uh, contribute back. Uh, it was found that two thirds of all participating organizations intend to ramp up their open source investments in 2010. The number uh, dovetails nice, nicely with survey results released a uh, released at that time by Zenos, an open source software developer, which note that 98% of all enterprise companies are using open source software in some capacity. Well, that's that's all well and good, right? Well, one little number in the uh, Accenture results puts a little rain on the open source par parade at only 29% of those using open source and in, in the enterprise sector plan to contribute their own developmental efforts back into the larger open source community, which itself goes against the very definition of open source. Now, that's not the legal definition of open source as required by the licensing that accompanies any given open source project. Such contracts often stipulate that an entity must include the source code alongside any compiled program or at least make it available for one to download from an easily accessible location. But that's only if an open source program is being released to the public. Uh, what is your take on that, Armageddon? It, it also depends on the companies that um, that release the software as well. I mean, and I'm talking about the why would they release the software. Um, for example, um, some companies do not benefit by by sharing their own software because you know they don't benefit. They want money from that. Other companies actually share the software simply because the ben the, it's beneficial to them in market shares, for example, which would help. Like, let's say Mozilla, for example. Even though Mo the Mozilla um, Foundation doesn't get paid by the users, they have market shares and they get paid from that. Um, they also get help from Google, they get help from everywhere else. Um, so it, it also depends on the company, but I would say that it, it would be easier to um, use open source applications to uh, to the to benefit a company instead of starting everything from scratch for for their own benefits. I mean, you would cut a lot of time and effort and money simply by using something that's already been written and just add whatever you need to it. Oscult. Just as a comment on the fact that a lot of governments and big businesses use uh, open source software, that is me in any way. If it wasn't for open source software those businesses wouldn't exist in the first place because take an example of Facebook Facebook uses Apache server it uses HTML, PHP and a couple other things that use Python, Ruby etc etc all of these things are programming languages and protocols and they're all open source if they weren't open source back in the early days of Facebook even though Mark Zuckerberg was at Harvard and was pretty rich would he have the money to pay for all of this stuff that just to get a site up and running? No. And going for the small person, it's even more effective. Take for example the young businessman who has no money and wants to set up a simple website. Well, thanks to free and open source software, he doesn't have to go and spend a fortune on it. He can do it for next to nothing, really. Electro. Um, yeah, like you were saying, it's a really good job. We have got these open source projects because, like we say, we're not all Bill Gates, you know what I mean? We ain't all got billions of pounds to invest in projects and software and stuff. But there are little pro programs that we do use that are closed source, like Skype and stuff that, you know, they, they want to keep their own source code available, but we can still use them on Linux because they've made Linux derivatives of them. But most of the software we do use tend to be open sourced anyway. Pizza dude. Yeah, uh, uh, Spatry, I just want to, um, like, I agree with what Oscult says. Um, not everybody has, like, a million dollars to invest in all, all this proprietary software. Like, why get Microsoft Office when you can Audi and LibreOffice free and open source? Exactly. Armageddon, you're next. Um, I want to say something about um, sharing back in return or giving back to the community. Um, it's it's not only I just thought about it for a second, and it's it's not only about giving back, um, contributing to the community in the way of let's say open source um, code, but you can you can let's say contribute to the community in 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 a lot of other different ways and 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 as meaningful way. For example, if I if I come to you, Spatry, and say hey try this application, let's say it's an open source application which um, 
um, it's an alternative for an application that you're using. This is a way of contributing to the community back as well. If you're opening a bug report, that's, that's contributing to the community. It's not only about giving back the source code or opening the source of the application that's uh, beneficial to the community either. Marcus, you're up. Um, also, too, with open source software, just the fact that um, someone that will make something open source has got there's a good chance it's going to be on all three platforms: Mac, Windows, and um, Linux. So um, you get the best of all all the all the software. And some people don't even know that the software is actually open source. It's just they just use it, which is a good thing. Definitely, Ben, you're next. Um, well, I'll say that I mean, I'm in the world, like everyone else, and. Um, I mean, I try and use open source as much as possible, so I strongly encourage uh, people to use FOSS and all those kind of things, because I think that using closed source is sort of a de-effectored for all kinds of companies and things, so yeah, there's my two cents on that. Okay, and going on that vein, uh, where Armageddon was sharing that it's great that there are people out there and companies that are giving something back. You know I was just reading an article uh, just uh, the, uh, I think it was yesterday, about NASA. And that's the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And uh, they have a website up where they have open source projects that they are actually contributing to the community. And they have, uh, they have a whole page full of applications here. And I mean, uh, different things like Big View allows for interactive panning and zooming of images of arbitrary size on desktop. Uh, they have uh, e-standards for mass property engineering. Uh, they have a program called Echo. Um, it's the initial character and plan development uh, that began in June of 98 and that was called Independent Information Management System. Uh, they have a Geometry Manipulation Protocol. I mean, they have tons of things. Uh, Java Gene, they, they're writing programs in Java and C++. Uh, I will put a link in the show notes to any for any of you guys who want to go on this page and have a look at some of their contributions to the community. But this is amazing because, I mean, a lot of our American tax dollars are going into NASA and the Space Administration administration and they're giving something back which i think is wonderful armageddon you're next um yeah and you just remind me about something we talked about before the show i i also read an article uh, a while ago about the irish government moving to open source now that's not that's not something new because a lot of governments have moved to open source and they're, they're moving but the 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 new thing that the idea that the the Irish government came up with is a contribution in their own way to the open source which is also as amazing as the NASA project um, so what they did is they thought well we're gonna move from um, using you know closed source applications to open source applications and that's gonna take us time let's say a period of time of let's say five years and we're gonna have to move all of our servers all of all of our applications databases um all of those stuff from the current closed source applications to the open source ones so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take all the information of how we moved what we did all the steps necessary and write them down and then when the project is fully converted from closed source to open source, we're going to share the, our knowledge with any other, let's say, company or um, government that needs to switch. And we're going to help them switch from closed source to open source. That's another way of contributing back to the community as well. Pizza Dude, you had a comment. Um, I just want to add something to what Armageddon said earlier. I think he said something like, you don't have to... Um be a programmer to contribute back to the open source community. You could just do something simple as submitting a bug report or a feature request and stuff like that. It's not that kind of, uh, you don't get that kind of interaction with the developers and the community in uh, the proprietary software world. Bingo, right? You hit the nail right on the head there. Uh, in that, yes, you can give something back to the community by, uh, you know, doing bug reports and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing my part by putting up videos on YouTube. I mean, there are so many different ways that everybody contribute. 
You can even, just by being here in the Linux distro community, helping out somebody else who's having a problem with a particular piece of software that they're trying to run, everybody that is present here is contributing in some way or another just by being here. You know, and, and you know, this is one thing that really makes the community strong is because, you know, we have we have a wonderful community where people are always willing to help out somebody else sharing that knowledge for the benefit of everyone. I think this is a wonderful thing. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and move on because uh, we were uh, talking about, and I want to go back to what Armageddon was saying that the Irish government was uh, is using uh, using free and open source. There are I've got this uh, page here that I'm going to share in the uh, show notes as well. Uh, this is called 50 Places Linux is Running That You Might Not Expect." Uh, there are the U.S. Department of Defense is using Linux. The U.S. Navy submarine fleet is using Linux. The city of Munich, Germany, Spain, the Federal Aviation Administration, the French Parliament, uh, state-owned industrial and commercial bank of China, uh, Pakistani schools and colleges are using free and open source software. Uh, Cuba is using it. Uh, Macedonia's Ministry of Education and Science. The United States Postal Service. The United States Federal Courts. I mean, there are tons. And, t and I mean, I haven't even read. I just read a partial part of this listing here. But there, you know, uh, there are schools. Um, uh, you know, government agencies and all kinds of businesses around the world. Novell, of course. Uh, Google, uh, that's a big one. IBM, Panasonic, Virgin America, Cisco. Everybody's heard of them. Uh, uh, Omaha Steaks, Amazon.com, Peugeot, the car manufacturer, Wikipedia, the New York Stock Exchange, the Burlington Coat Factory. I mean, free and open source is everywhere, and it is growing. Armageddon, what is your take on that? Um, I would say you, you, well, now because Linux is everywhere. I mean, phones, TVs, um, radios, radio stations, it's, it's pretty much everywhere. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't be, um, you know... Uh, out fetched for all of all of those companies to be using it, and especially that um, it makes a very good server. I mean, one of the best servers in the world is is you know out of the top fifteen, I think you have like ninety five percent of them, or maybe even more. Um, that are Linux servers. So if you have a if you want a server, you gotta go with Linux. I mean, IBM knew that and they moved away. Now you also mentioned that Microsoft is using. Uh... <laughs> free and open source and IRC. Can you give me an explanation on that? <laughs> or was that a joke? Well, I, 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 it was a joke, but it wouldn't be far-fetched for them to be using, um, you know, either Linux or, FB, or BSD servers. I mean, um, the first, the, the, if, for me, in, in my own way, if you think about it, if their servers are Windows-based, I wouldn't think they would <laughs> handle being online all that time. <laughs> I mean, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Pizza, dude, you're next. Yeah, um, I heard Microsoft uh, Skype servers use Linux. That's all. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised in the least. All right, well, folks, we are running close to the end here. So I'm going to pass the microphone to each and every one of you, and we'll get your final thoughts, starting with you, Armageddon. Um, yeah, about, about the Skype thing, it's simply because Skype is not Microsoft. They just bought it, like, uh, a couple of years ago, and it went downhill from there. Um, but f for me, I mean, um, the free and open source so uh, software is, I am in the movement, and I am in the Linux existing community. I am also a, a contributor in the Gentoo project. So as, as much as possible, I try to help with bugs and stuff like that and everything. Um, it talks to the human side of me, and... Um, every single part of me wants the whole thing to be better and better with with every single day and the only thing to do uh, you know is to be a part of the movement to to be to be you know to be involved for you to feel the way other people feel and to share knowledge and everything and it talks to me on a human level and i i, I mean it's 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 not only the free part of it it's the human part of it that talks to me so i would i would suggest that everyone should move in uh, to the community and help as much as possible and, you know, live with each other, share stuff as human beings. 
Voltem went on to mention that it is instinctive to want to help others. Ben, what are your final thoughts? Well, open source freaking rocks as the FOSS, and um, I really enjoy it, and um, it's actually part of my life, as it is all of ours, and, um, you know, it's everywhere. I mean, it's forever. It's not going to go away, so might as well use it, in my perspective. Lectro, what is your final thought? Well, it just goes to show how popular open source and Linux is, because, you know, there's big massive shows like the Linux Action Show, there's Leo Laporte, there's Revision 3, they all talk about this week in Linux and what runs Linux this week and stuff like that, and it just goes to show that there's that many people helping out that it's not going to go anywhere, anywhere anytime soon. It's just, I think the internet and businesses need open source and Linux to survive, and that's why they've strove so well and made so much money, all because of open source. Yeah, I'm nodding my head in agreement on that one. Marcus, what's your final thoughts? What would the world be if um, Microsoft ever went open source, I imagine? <laughs> I think we have I think we have better uh, chance of uh, making snowballs in hell. <laughs> Oscar, you always dream. As I just want to say, quite simply put, FOSS is the the savior to the underdog. It gives the little person the chance to be able to achieve great things. That is my simple view on free and open source software. Pizza dude, what's your final thought? I just want to say, for me. Open source is like drugs, the good kind. Once you get hooked, you can never stop contributing and using it. I like that one. That is really cool. You know, and uh, and the thing is, you know, free and open source software has really redefined the way I compute uh, today. And, you know, uh, all of us who, who run free and open source operating systems, Linux, that sort of thing, we want to see it grow because the more people that are using free and open source software, the more people that are contributing something back to it. And then eventually that gives us more and more options. Gentlemen, this has been a wonderful discussion. Discussion. Thank you, Armageddon. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Lectro. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Pizza Dude. Thank you, all of you, for a wonderful show. Thank you, everybody in the listening room, for participating on today's show. And thank you, everyone who is listening to us online and on YouTube. And we will be back the same time, same channel next week. We'll see you then. Today's show was brought to you by the Linux Destroy Community. Visit us today at linuxdestroycommunity.com and chat with us on Mumble or in IRC on the Freenode Network in the Linux Destroy Community channel. The Linux Destroy Community. Freedom through the sharing of knowledge. All right. Now that we had that wonderful discussion on the Linux Zoo crew, I decided to open it up. And now we've got everybody here for our post-show conversation. Hey. Hi. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Everybody's quiet. Um, could do a big intro if you want. Uh, okay, does uh, did the cat get your tongue or something like that? You know, there was a lot of food for thought in that discussion we had tonight, hey? I'm just shy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to get banned on my first show. I believe you. I really believe you, Armageddon. You had some background noise, Armageddon. Yeah. <laughs> How did I give you a heart attack, Armageddon? Was it that laugh? No, actually, you were we're on countdown five, four. Hello, like you didn't get to one yet. That's because uh, the three, two, one was silent and fast. Exactly. Just give me a sec. I've got the heater on. It's cold here, so I'm just gonna switch it off. Hey, Voltum, why don't you say hi? Hi. All right, we've got Voltum in the house, ladies and gentlemen. It's a trap! Run! So tell me, Voltum, what do you think about free and open source software? I just love the idea. There's nothing really to say about it. I just, I just think it's a good thing for humanity. You say it every time we do the Linux chat. Well, Spatry has it saying about the free and open source community. Yeah, I was wondering why uh, you never actually appeared on the show, there, Voltum. He's also shy. I'm very shy. He's also a very, well, at the time, he was also a very, very busy man, too. Yeah, Do you guys like my comment on open sources like drugs? I kind of think it's like that. Uh, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm addicted to it. I gotta, you know, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm hitting up uh, the GetDeb websites all the time, downloading free and open source software. It's just amazing stuff they got on there, free games, free applications. Actually, that is a good website if you guys haven't checked it out, the GetDeb site. 
I mean, they have tons. Of, you know, that's how I find out a lot about a lot of applications that are out there now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it is a really good, good uh, website. Also, PlayDeb if you're into games. Yeah, it's the yeah. same thing, company, I think. Yeah, uh, does anybody else know of any really good websites that you can go to to find out about new applications? I know there's Web Update and there's Oh My God, Ubuntu and that sort of thing, but have you guys heard of any others? Um, if you want a if good want... Up-to- up-to-date distro, uh, Linux Torrents, uh, it, it just does straight Linux, so, um, and it has a quite a few torrents if you want it that don't normally appear in the, on, uh, in the distro site, just in case you're, anyone's looking for a torrent somewhere for your Linux distro. Some good sites. There's yeah, like you said, there's uh, there's a web update. There's OMG Ubuntu. There's also Ubuntu Vibes. If you've heard of that, no, I haven't. I'll have to check that one out. And going on that same vein, where um, uh, now I lost my train of thought. Gosh, I hate it when that happens. There's also Reddit.com/slash/r/slash/ubuntu and slash r slash Linux. They're both good too. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. I use Google. never really, sorry, use Reddit, but apparently it's heaps of stuff on your phone. I don't know. I just can't be bothered going Reddit slash blah blah blah. Armageddon. I, I usually use Google and I search for, let's say, um, um, let's say I want, I want an application that's, that does something. And I remember one that I used to use on another operating system. I would just go with a name and then alternative. And then there's this um, website called Alternative 2 or something that gives you, you know, uh, a bunch of alternatives for a lot of applications. Yes. Awesome website, the Alternative 2 page, if you guys haven't seen that. Can that I haven't is, seen that one. Yeah. Um, yeah basically, what site. you do is you... Um, yeah, basically, um, for instance, let's say I'm using GovCView as my webcam, and I want to find an alternative to it. I just type in GovCView and then alternative and in, in the Google search, and then the alternative to website comes up that gives you a list of applications for both Windows, Mac, and Linux. Thanks. Okay, I mean, I like the, um, the open source pre- um, software that's actually a cross-platform. I mean, to me, that they're the ones I always install oh, anyway, being a dual beater. Ubuntu Vibes is pretty good. Uh, I was surfing on there and I found a front end for GLC, which is a it's it's a front end. Uh, GLC is like it's this thing for recording OpenGL applications. It's kind of like the alternative to Fraps for Linux, but the it outputs really huge files. So please be warned. Was it Puppy that was doing some frat tests on some of his videos on some games? I know someone was Puppy Minutes World or one of the guys were, but um, I thought that was quite interesting anyway. Yeah, I just pulled up the Ubuntu Vibes webpage. I'm definitely going to have a browse around this one. Looks like it's got some apps, games, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'll be checking that one out. Thanks for the tip. Actually, if you want a um, good, the Chrome Web Store is getting quite good. I know it's not open source, but um, everything on it's pretty much free. Um, and they've got some, if you're just running Google Chrome and just want some good apps, Ooh. you know, I know, I know, but it's not too bad. <laughs> some of it is Chrome pretty good. good. I just found one. It's called LinuxAppFinder.com. Hey, that's, yeah, I remember that one. That was a long time ago. It's been a while since I saw that page. But you can also find the Strowwatch app uh, on um, Google Chrome. Quite a lot of Linux stuff as well. So it's not that bad. Oh, I just found one that's very interesting, actually. It's called PortableLinuxApps.org, which is basically a form of portable apps you can put on your flash drive. Oh, there'd be... Oh, oh I'll be keen on that one. I'll show you, but um, um, put a link in the room later on. But um, yeah, one thing I've always struggled to is putting... Uh, um, although I'm good with, it, good with it now, is putting a USB... an ISO on a USB from Linux. You guys are going to be the death of me. With all these really cool links you guys are shouting out at me, now I'm going to be up all night looking at these websites and not sleeping so I can go and do my job tomorrow. (laughs) Hey, Spatry, guess what? what? Guess what? Go on, Lecto. I want to say it's all about the freedom and sharing of knowledge of others. Yeah, by the way, on portable Linux apps, they have games as well, Spatty, so you can put them on your flash drive and go at work and play, you know. (laughs) Unfortunately, I can't play games on the work computer. Well, now you can. Uh, don't have time, really, because, I mean, I run a very busy sandwich shop. I know, it was a joke. It's your I hungry, hungry, you know? <laughs> um, Yeah, I hope I wasn't too bad. I did try and keep... Too, I wasn't trying to talk too much. 
I reckon NASA's got better since they've privatised it. Or well, not privatised it, but let, let private companies come in and actually, um, um, rather than the government, control most of it. Is it just me? They're doing things a lot cheaper than they normally would. What are you talking to me? Oh, well, everyone. Um, I'm just saying that NASA seems to be a lot, but doing running things a little bit better since the government's let the private companies come in and actually compete for each other. Um, and they're bringing their own ideas in, which um, is, is good. I think anything to do with sharing, um, even if it's not open source, is always good for the commu community in general. It's when it's closed and they don't listen to anyone else's ideas and they just shut themselves off and do their own thing, eventually it just dies, but that's just my opinion. Well, to be honest, NASA did help humanity in a lot of things uh, indirectly with their stuff. For example, um, when they the first um, moon, the first uh, Mars rovers, Viking One and Viking Two, um, they needed a sort of tires that could handle the pressure on Mars, and they um, they asked Goodyear to give them, you know, to start um, uh, to do a, a research project on creating better uh, wheels to work on Mars. And even even though they, they did do the research and they, they did do manufacture, they gave Goodyear an idea of how tires should be and they added the uh, the whole knowledge of that into the tires, giving them more lifetime on, on Earth. So they, they helped a lot of projects that way by giving up uh, projects to other companies to, to, to do and then they, they would have been used, you know, everywhere in the world. Yeah, I think open source software. I mean, just like a Linux server, for example, just with some. You know, I think, I think, I think, some people just have closed minds and they need to open them up a bit more. Especially governments that really just use Windows and don't want to change and just upgrade every two or three years and spend millions and millions of dollars upgrading. Why when you don't have to? Yeah, and the thing is, uh, European governments, uh, I think, have banned. Um, the, well, they have banned proprietary software, but they've banned software patents. And so that's always a plus. So you know that we're going to be seeing growth over there, you know? That padded thing is just a, it's just a crap shoot. It's, I mean, it's just um, basically, I think it's just companies getting egos and suing each other. I mean, I, can't, I don't see any point in it whatsoever. They should just get rid of that whole system. It's our date. I mean, why do you need a patent system anyway? People are going to copy it eventually anyway if they want to. That's but, true. By the way, Spat, you're talking about free and open source software. Would you happen to have um, an application where you can, um, let's say, plug in your, your guitar and then add effects to it and record it on Linux? I'm sorry? Um, an application that would be, uh, that would allow you to be able to connect your guitar to your computer and then add up some, you know, amp effects and, and effects and stuff like that and then record with it? Yeah, um, there um, there is some software that will allow you to uh, do that. Um, I think uh, I can't remember the name of the application uh, that supports VST plugins, and then you can plug your guitar in, and it will allow you to pr pr you know apply real time effects. Right now, uh, what I do is uh, I use FL Studio, and I take uh, actual sampled guitar effects, and I put a virtual amplifier on them to get my uh, sound and that sort of thing. Uh, unfortunately, right now I haven't been able to find an open source solution that's suitable for my needs at this point but i am i i do have high hopes that we'll be seeing something like that in the future well the thing is uh i recently purchased i had a good deal on it um uh, it's uh you know it's it's an interface to plug in my guitar to it and it works great on 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 windows it comes with its own i i think you know what i'm talking about it comes with its own application and i was i was because you know i compiled my own kernel and i was i was i was going through all the options and it startled me that we have we have drivers for them so you know a few years ago you couldn't be able to use the the hard the, the you know the interface at all now it's you know you plug it in and then it it turns green it works you, you have you have drivers for it in the kernel and it works fine but the problem is you can't use their own software on, on, on other operating systems. So I'm trying to find an alternative application to be able to plug it in and stuff like that. I'm sure there's something out there that will allow you to do it. Um, and uh, I just, the name of the application is on the tip of my tongue that supports uh, the VST plugins uh, that you would be able to uh, apply those effects to. But, um, you know, getting VST plugins uh, working in uh, Linux for me has uh, been a little bit dodgy. No, it's not LMMS. Um, it's Ardor. Oh, yeah, I've heard of Ardor. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, for you know, I've looked at Ardor a few times. Mm -hmm. I just can't seem to wrap my head around that one. 
Yeah, it can be. It can be hard. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, I'll, I'll I'll give it a try. I guess. Okay. Does anybody have any final thoughts before I turn the recorder off? No. <laughs> I'd just like to thank Spetry for inviting me, and I enjoyed the show. Oh, we were glad to have you, Marcus. Hope it wasn't too much of an annoying pain. We love you too, Hi Six. I'm just glad to be a part of the community now. Pizza, glad to have you with us. Say, um, I'll take mine with uh, anchovies, extra pepperoni, and green peppers. <laughs> Pref- preferably sure, it'll be a- over there in uh, 15 minutes. Yeah, preferably a deep dish, please. Extra cheese. I'm going to say you're ridden out your, um, your subway order, Spatra. <laughs> hey, did you know pizza is the only junk food that contains something from the basic four food groups? My wife measures a beer king. Don't tell me about junk food. <laughs> you know, we don't have pizzas in our subway. I'd like to make a comment too, just to end as well. Open source software is the reason why I'm here. If it wasn't for open source software, I wouldn't be here. And for that, I'm greatly grateful of it. I agree, and if it wasn't for free and open source software, there would be no cup of Linux. And speaking of cup of Linux, I think I'm going to have a cup of that right now, and uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and do some audio editing before I call it a night. Thank you once again, all of you, for being a part of the show, and I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Thanks. Good night, Spatry. Goodbye. And, and Spatra, before we go, if it weren't for open source software and Linux, we'd probably all have viruses and we'd have to reinstall Windows every three months. I know. No, you wouldn't. You'd have Oscult OS. No, um, we would have to reinstall Windows every week. I'm out. Good. There's always Mac. No, just see you guys. Ahead of Mac. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Did he leave? No, he's still here. Bob. <laughs> night, Mary Ellen.